Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here, and I just want to quickly break down my thoughts on two Star Wars ships from the new canon that have previously existed in written works, but have never had visualization until just now at a Gen Con announcement from FFG, where they've been added to Star Wars Armada, the board game, and finally got some artwork depicting their appearance, as well as the models themselves. The first of the two is the New Republic Nadiri Starhawk battleship. This is something that people have been waiting to see an image of for many years, it's a very important part of the Battle of Jakku in the Aftermath books and the various other sources that have covered that event, and it's essentially the mainline capital ship of the New Republic as constructed out of salvaged Imperial Star Destroyer components. I've got to say, the design they settled on here is not really what I was expecting the Starhawk to look like. It seems like a very, very reinforced Nebulon B. It has that same kind of L-shaped frame, except bulked out substantially. We don't know the exact dimensions of this ship, but it's obviously on a very large capital ship kind of range competing with Imperial Star Destroyers, if not more so, as we've heard this thing has managed to stand up to Super Star Destroyer in combat for at least a short time during the Battle of Jakku. The ship appears to have a bow-mounted hangar bay, either that's a hangar bay or a very large forward weapon, I think it's probably a hangar bay by the look of the kind of shield generator thing going on there. Also, those could be tractor beam projectors around it, which would make sense for kind of recovery or salvage. The use of Imperial components to make this is very apparent, it certainly has that sort of grey angular style to it. You can even see some kind of triangular Imperial Star Destroyer style windows across the sides there. Personally, I think this is something that really nicely sets the New Republic apart here because I was never much of a fan of the Mon Calamari designs or most of the kind of larger Alliance ships. This looks a little bit more militaristic and it kind of fits the national government that the Rebellion has morphed into in the late Galactic Civil War. Some of the artwork provided by FFG here is gorgeous. FFG always do an amazing job of commissioning fantastic artwork for all of these ships and it's even more meaningful when it's the first look at a design that people have known existed for quite a while. As it stands, there's no clear image of the aft of this ship or really the ventral side much just yet, but we can see some nice detailing on the model where Imperial Star Destroyer style shield generator spheres can be seen along the broadside hull, which is a nice little detail. And I'm a fan of the blue and yellow kind of decals in keeping with the New Republic's usual iconography. I think the starboard side of this ship might have a New Republic crest emblazoned on it. I've seen that in one image, but it's not mirrored on the other side of the ship. If I had to guess, I'd say the prow-mounted windows on the kind of keel here are the bridge area for the ship, which is certainly a better location than the usual exposed tower that a lot of Imperial designs go for. This is a little bit more in keeping with the auxiliary bridge structure that we see on the Radus in The Last Jedi. We're told that this thing is powerful powered by Magna batteries, whatever they are, and it's equipped with numerous turbo laser banks as well as ion torpedoes and concussion missiles, so a decent amount of missile ordnance there. It has at least two docking bays, presumably those are the side-mounted ones, and can carry a number of starfighters in addition to its main role as a kind of close quarters tanky warship. One thing we do know from the Battle of Jakku is that these ships have tractor beams ten times more powerful than the Imperial standard ones, which allowed a Starhawk class ship during that battle to pull an executive class Super Star Destroyer out of orbit. This would be in keeping with the kind of array of what looked like tractor beam projectors on the ship's bow there, and I've no doubt that this will be used in the Armada board game as some kind of special ability of some description. Certainly a nice unique feature to give this ship a bit of a calling card. And moving on to the second design here, we have the Onager class Star Destroyer, which I didn't realise already existed when this was announced, but apparently this was already featured under a different name in the Rebel Files source book. My immediate thought upon hearing Onager class was that this was going to be some kind of artillery or siege ship, and it seems I was right, as this is basically a mobile composite beam laser platform for orbital bombardment. I thought at first it might have a kind of eclipse-style coaxial super laser, but it seems from the fluff text they've provided that it is just some kind of powerful beam turbo laser weapon. Two barrels for it, located in that central trench down the middle of the ship, and powered apparently by kyber crystals. I've got to say, I'm not a huge fan of the overall space frame here. I think the bridge module looks a little bit weird. The kind of widened bow, it's certainly unique, but not really in keeping with most Imperial designs. It sort of breaks the flow of the Imperial aesthetic a little bit, I think. It's certainly unique overall, and a fair bit of imagination has gone into it, so I can't fault it there. And as far as planetary seed ships go, this is definitely a hundred times better than the Mandator for Space Pizza from The Last Jedi. We know this ship has five large engines on the aft, 
Uh, we've seen one nice piece of concept art of it bombarding a planet as viewed from below, which looks pretty cool. In that image, we can see docking bays on the aft of the kind of hammerhead section, which is a pretty cool placement. We don't have too much more information on this, but this seems to be incredibly specialized, far more so than the Starhawk, in that it carries the composite beam lasers for planetary sieging. It has a couple of docking bays, presumably for a defensive TIE complement and some shuttles. And beyond that, it's really not that versatile based on its description alone. Again, I don't know the size, but just kind of eyeballing it here based on the design, I would suggest that this probably isn't hugely useful as a close quarters warship, more something that is meant to be kept far out of range, used against planets or possibly against large warships as an artillery unit, but in need of protection and escort when attacked directly. We can even see in its main artwork that it is flanked by Imperial Star Destroyers protecting it, so possibly this ship is a little bit fragile should it fall under direct attack. I'm okay with that, I like having specialised ships, I'd much rather have a fleet of individual thought-out designs that play to each other's strengths and make a more realistic overall tapestry than just sort of the ultimate ship of the week to be added to the roster. It's interesting that the First Order don't have any of these or use them. I mean, possibly they do, but they saw fit to completely replace this with the Mandator 4 as their planetary siege vessel, even though this isn't all that old by the time we reach the First Order's time frame. Possible that this design wasn't all it was cracked up to be in the end, but again, the First Order Dreadnought has a lot of design problems, many of which are not in universe, but rather just art failures, I think. I can certainly believe that in canon, the Mandator is meant to be a simply better siege ship than this one. Now, finally, one other interesting piece of information that FFG gave us out of Gen Con is a little bit more detail on the First Order fighter that we see in Star Wars Resistance used by Major Von Reg. Now, I'd initially been operating under the assumption that this was the standard First Order TIE interceptor. It's just that this one in particular was painted red by Von Reg. But it turns out this thing is called the TIE BA Baron Space Superiority Interceptor which suggests to me now that it is some kind of unique craft for elite pilots, and maybe they are all painted in this colour and handed out to the best pilots the First Order has available. This is kind of interesting, but I'm also not a huge fan of it because I'd prefer the First Order to have an interceptor. They seem to be focusing quite a lot on kind of elite units and things without having a sort of sensibly fleshed out set of stock designs. We still have no First Order TIE bomber or a standard First Order interceptor. I was hoping we'd simply see this in the black and silver used as a normal TIE interceptor for the First Order, because I really like the design overall. This is one of the coolest looking kind of wing arrangements for a TIE fighter I've ever seen. The combination of the curved style of the Inquisitorial TIE and the kind of broken fork shape of the TIE interceptor with the nice kind of quilon shortened section at the aft just looks really fantastic overall. I think it would actually look better in the black and silver than it does in red, but I think at this point, based on the name alone, we can safely assume that this is a rare elite craft for barons of the First Order or whatever. Either way, it's a cool design. We already know that it has four laser cannons and two multi-use projectile launchers, which we've seen firing concussion missiles in Star Wars Resistance. Uh, this thing held its own against an entire squadron of T-85X wings in that show. Admittedly, most of them were flown by cadets, and one of them was flown by the main character of that show, who is occasionally an unstoppable flying ace, and occasionally a moron who couldn't fly his way out of a paper bag, so I don't know how much we want to read into that. Either way, this is another cool design for the First Order that I'd like to see show up in the film at some point point or in a different episode of Resistance or some other iteration going forward. I hope this isn't relegated to being like a four episode one shot. And I really hope that one day we get a stock TIE Interceptor for the First Order. I mean, it's kind of late now. We've uh, we've burned through the entire sequel trilogy and the First Order still don't have a sort of sensibly constructed plausible fleet. So it seems like it might be too little too late to suddenly give them bombers and interceptors and other various expected designs this late in the game. It's kind of a shame that they were never given the same attention and and grounded world building that was given to the Galactic Empire and the Republic and the various other major factions back in the day. Either way, this came out of nowhere, so big thanks to FFG for uh, fleshing out the Star Wars universe a little bit here and shining a light on these designs that have been relegated to the pages for a while now. The big question on a lot of people's lips here is, will we see these in Episode 9? Is that why they've been revealed now? I'm not going to say that's impossible. We don't know anything close to enough about Episode 9 to make a kind of educated guess just yet, but I'm still holding out hope that the New Republic will make an appearance in that film and we'll get at least one really impressive space battle before the sequel trilogy hangs up its hat, so to speak. And it would certainly be fantastic to see the Starhawk and the Onager on screen in that movie. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of these two new designs and what do you think our chances are of seeing these on the big screen moving forward. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. 
Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.